Hello, welcome to Nat 45 Computing Science, and in this lesson we're going to look at the some of the legal implications. So the laws we're going to look at, along with some health and safety issues, are going to be the Data Protection Act, the Computer Misuse Act, the Copyright Designs and Patents Act, and the Communications Act. So let's have a quick look at the Data Protection Act. Now this has eight principles. The data shall be processed fairly and lawfully and the fact that you shall obtain data only for lawful purposes, i.e. you can't collect data in order to go and blackmail someone, for example. Um, you should only collect the data, co data that is adequate, relevant and not excessive. The school, for example, needs to know some of your medical history. Do we need to know all of it? Well, no, but we need to know some. Likewise, if you're filling out a form for a mortgage, it is reasonable for them to ask about your financial inf information. It has to be relevant and not excessive. Uh, data sh needs to be accurate and kept up to date and also modified where it's wrong. And data shouldn't be kept for longer than is necessary. Uh, there's particular time frames given for particular pieces of data and these should be adhered to. Uh, you should be data should be processed in accordance with the rights of uh, data subjects. And appropriate measures should be taken against unauthorised or unlawful processing of data. And last but not least, personal data shall not be transferred to countries outside the EU unless adequate protection is present, i.e. in the country that it is going to there is sufficient enough um, protection there as is here. So basically data needs to be secure, accurate, up to date. Now there are, you have rights under the Act. You have a right to access a copy of the information comprised in your personal data. You are you have a right to object or complain that's likely to data that is causing damage. For example, if your credit file is wrong, that can cause you some serious issues, in which case you have a right to, to complain about that. You can prevent processing for direct marketing. And you can object to decisions being taken by automated means. And you have a right in certain circumstances, which is beyond the scope of the course, to have inaccurate personal data rectified, blocked, erased or destroyed, depending on what it is. Now, you cannot access all of your information. Certain data, for example, if it, if it relates to national security, for example, you may not be able to see, etc., etc. And you can also claim compensation for damages caused by a breach of the Act. Now some terminology you need to know is that if your data is being held about you, then you are the data subject. And the data controller is the, pr the legal definition, is a person who determines the purposes for which and the manner in which any personal data is to be processed. Basically, the, the organisation or the, the named person in an organisation who controls the data. So for example, if the school held data about you, then they would be the, the controller. Uh, random kind of data, prosecution, data protection prosecution, uh, a Lancashire bar owner was prosecuted by the Information Commission Officer's Office because he failed to register the fact that he was using CCTV equipment. Anyone who stores personal data has to register with the Information Commissioner. Another one was, uh, for example, a bank employee was fined for reading the bank statements of her partner's ex-wife. And funnily enough, she also lost her job from the bank. Okay, because they accessed data, pers personal data, that they shouldn't have been. Now let's look at the Computer Misuse Act. The Computer Misuse Act has three main sections. One is unauthorised access to computer material. This is basic hacking. This is getting access to a system without permission. You have unauthorised access with intent to commit or facilitate commission of further offences, i.e. helping to commit a crime. And if you are performing some unauthorised modification of some computer material, of some data, this is hacking and modifying data. This is planting viruses, deleting, modifying files. So, again, let's look at some um, court records. For example, a business manager of this academy, uh, the business manager of the such, such and such academy, had recently been made redundant, and then they decided to access the school's email system using the login and password of another employee, and they read private emails from the head teacher. Um, Aiding to commit a crime, 
for example, if you penetrate a bank's computer system intending to move money to another account, you would still be guilty. Not only would you be guilty of hacking, you'd be guilty of trying to then commit fraud. So, again, that's illegal. So, if you're aiding a crime, for example, um, an authorised US American Express credit analyst gained access to unauthorised credit card accounts and PIN numbers, and their accomplice then used four Amex cards in London in ATM machines, and they reckon that it, the, the fraud totaled somewhere along the lines of one million US dollars. Unauthorised modification of data. Um, a Trojan used to steal login credentials for online banking accounts, then uploaded these to servers controlled by people. Now, this is actually a tip-off by Estonian police to the Met Police, and they seized one of the servers that happened to be located in the UK. Now, the problem would be if that server wasn't located in the UK, that would have been an issue. And this may have infected anything up to a thousand computers. But if you write a virus, etc., etc., you can be found guilty under the Computer Misuse Act. Various penalties are, you can be fined, you can be jailed, you can be jailed and or fined. And although take the penalties and, and such with, with, a, with a pinch of salt, they may be out of, out of date. And what if your phone voicemail was hacked? Is that a breach of the Computer Misuse Act? Let's look at the Copyright Designs and Patents Act. This law applies to published materials which can come in most forms. If you have the copyright to something, you have the right to control the use of whatever the resource is. You also have what is known as intellectual property rights. Now, intellectual property is any form of original creation that you have made. This basically, the main implication of the Copyright Designs and Patents Act is piracy. Piracy is when you're downloading some kind of software, music, video for free that, you sh that someone should have otherwise paid for. I mean, you actually need a license to use software. So if you, when you buy a disc, you're not actually paying for the disc, you're paying for a license to use the software. Um, piracy is, is a direct breach of the computer, the, sorry, the Copyright Designs and Patents Act. may also expose you to other issues, but such as identity theft, phishing, etc., etc. Just a little mention, I mentioned software licensing there. There are kind of three main licenses, commercial software, stuff off the box or downloaded, you buy X amount of licenses and you can install it on X amount of machines. Shareware, you, you can use it for a, a demo or a trial period and then you either pay for it or delete it. And freeware or open source software is, as, it's, as it implies, you can download it and you use it free of charge. Now copyright is an automatic right. This has been taken from the uh, government site detailing what copyright actually is. It can protect pretty much anything from literary work such as books, to programs, to songs, to films. Hence why it's, cop it's kind of protected under the Copyright Designs and Patents Act. Now you can protect your ideas from by using patents, registered designs, trademarks, or legal kind of non-disclosure agreements. Now these are all out with the scope of the course, but a patent basically protects new inventions and how they work, how they're made, what they do. Now you can only renew a patent every five years and you can only hold it for a maximum of 20 years but that gives you the right to prevent others from basically making, using, importing or selling invention and the key thing is without your permission. A trademark uh, legal definition is a sign which can distinguish your goods and services from those of your competitors. So it could be your brand, it could be words, logos, a combination of both. But you may need some legal advice. You may need to obviously patent, patent it. And to do that, you may need to discuss it with like solicitors or any kind of legal representation. You can make them sign non-disclosure agreements. Now, plagiarism is a definition when you deliberately use someone else's language ideas or other original material without acknowledging the source, i.e. you pass it off as your own. So, for example, if you copy and paste images from the web, potentially, if you're kind of implying that they're yours, or if you're copying text over, it could be plagiarism. And there's a little copyright game there you can look to for different ways of protecting your intellectual property. Getting there, the Communications Act. So, 
The Communications Act, there's not much to say about that really. It ensured that a regulatory body called Ofcom for the Office of Communications had the power to monitor electronic communications. Now the Act is fairly extensive, but it covers such offences as if you dishonestly obtain electronic communication services such as free Wi-Fi, etc. Now that's not saying that you can't use free Wi-Fi, but for example, hacking into your next door neighbour's account and reaching off their Wi-Fi, even if they've not secured it. Uh, if you clone mobile phones, if you use public electronic networks to, to cause offence and distress to people. And the last issue we're going to look at is some health and safety. So if you have to be looking at this in class, you could speak with your partner for a few minutes and try to come up with a list. But if you were using computers for a large section of your daily work, you would need to look at some of the following issues. Um, typing. Is it as simple as getting a document holder so that it rests at a reasonable position? Um, chairs. Can you give people adjustable chairs, back armrests, particularly for people with back conditions and such? Um, you can give them breaks to help with eye strain. Um, RSI, which is repetitive strain injury, well that can be combated by using things like ergonomic keyboards, mice, gel rests for the keyboard and the mice. Um, you can adjust a uh, workstation layout so that, for example, maybe a monitor is at a higher height so that people don't need to stoop their neck down. So, you sometimes got to think of how to work around the issue. So, frequent breaks, good good brightness or good lighting to help with eye strain, mouse or keyboard gel rest, which we've kind of already mentioned for posture, adjustable chairs.